that's cleaning up oil and gas well sites. What does that mean? Um, yeah, what do we know? What do we don't know? Uh, how it could how we could leverage it to help landowners and, and developers clean up some of these uh, old abandoned oil and gas wells. Um, before we get started, I think I'll just provide a quick introduction to myself. Thank you for for providing that overview, Lara. Uh, but why am I talking about this today, or why? Are, why are Rob and I talking about this today? Um, I've, I've got 13 years of experience. I mean, 13 years being a trace associates and, and over 15 years experience in environmental consulting, contaminated site assessments, cleanups, uh, remediation, uh, wetlands, biophysical impact assessments. Uh, but for the last seven or eight years, the focus of, of my work has really been on helping developers and landowners address and, and mitigate some of the, the risks and contamination associated with oil and gas well sites. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, and that's part of my role as the real estate team lead or the principal in charge. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's something I'm pretty passionate about. And, and Rob, if you're able to provide us a, a quick update on why you're here today. Yeah, sounds good, Mike. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, like mentioned, my name is Rob Anderson and I'm Trace's director of projects. Um, I'm leading this initiative with the Alberta government, the Saskatchewan government and the BC government in regards to this inactive well liability cleanup programs. Um, prior to my time at Trace, I was also a team lead for an environmental group at an upstream oil and gas client. So have lots of um, industry experience and in how it might apply and be executed on the ground. Um, I'm also responsible at Trace to lead our program that we do work for with the Alberta Orphan Well Association, which occurs kind of in tandem to how this program is supposed to be rolled out. So yeah, lots of experience and excited to present today. Uh, that's great, thanks Rob. And with that, <clears throat> we'll get started. Uh, so this is just a brief overview of what we'll be talking about today. Who is Trace, what we know, what we don't know, and then some opportunities for landowners or, or developers. Um, looking to, to kind of wrap things up here in about 15 minutes and then open the floor to some questions. So if anyone has any, any burning thoughts, interested to, to, to hear them uh, either through the chat or, uh, or I believe there's an opportunity to unmute yourself and, and ask your question, but please don't be shy. Um, a quick note, uh, these are, yeah, these are all pictures that we've taken of our own, uh, our own field staff while we're out doing work. So besides doing contaminated site assessment, uh, I do some moonlighting as a hand model as well. So I'll start with a, just a quick overview of who is Trace, in case you haven't met us. Uh, specialized environmental consultants, uh, contaminated site assessments, reclamation, remediation, biophysical impact assessments, wetland assessments, uh, bugs and bunnies, all that kind of stuff is, is within our wheelhouse. Uh, you know, primarily with the oil and gas sector, that's about 40% of our business is the upstream oil and gas work. Uh, but the other 60% is split between the real estate, uh, which is what I lead, natural sciences services, uh, hydrogeological services, uh, biophysical services, natural sciences services, mining, industrial, uh, and, and the like. Uh, we've got offices across Alberta, Saskatchewan, and British Columbia. Uh, I'm out of the Calgary office. Uh, Rob is, is calling in to us today from the heart of Alberta, in Stettler, Alberta, which is the heart of oil and gas territory apparently too. So uh, uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got some satellite offices around Alberta and Saskatchewan as well to afford people to work where they want and how they want. And uh, uh, yeah, 90 environmental professionals. It's been exciting to see the, the growth over the last few years. And, and this is a picture of our 10 year anniversary uh, a few years ago. And uh, yeah, interesting to see those folks. Uh, so yeah, just a, a note, we're a privately owned, uh, owned by the employees uh, company. About 50% of the owners uh, are, are in the firm, or sorry, 50% of the employees own the firm. So with that, I'll dive into what we know, the program basics. And I'm sure as many of you had, if you're keeping an eye on, on the headlines, you've heard about this program and, and you know, in general what it means. Um, I, I think I'll start with the why it came up. And, and I mean, in Alberta, particularly, I mean, you could say Alberta, BC, and Saskatchewan, uh, there's a lot of old abandoned oil and gas well sites, and they don't seem to be getting cleaned up. And in fact, there's, you know, there's 73,000 abandoned wells, and that means everything's cut and cased and capped below ground. There's no more facilities. And then there's about 100,000 or 93,000 uh, inactive wells. And those are wells that they could go back and reproduce, uh, but most likely the oil and gas companies are done with them. And, and they just sit there. And, and 
to be honest, sometimes they sit there for decades. And uh, if, you, if you're a landowner, that can cause you some pretty grave concerns. If you're a developer and you've got some future development plans, uh, that can cause you some, some really significant concerns. So as part of an opportunity to address that, the government, uh, Justin Trudeau announced there was this $1.7 billion in funding. And uh, what that entails is this $1 billion for Alberta to clean up specifically oil and gas well sites in Alberta, uh, $500 million for Saskatchewan and $250 million for, for BC. So within that $1 million, um, we've got these increments and they're, they're split up into these $100 million increments. And the first increment that we saw was uh, from May 1st to, to May 31st. The announcement was made in April, uh, I think the first week of April. So as environmental consultants, we were scrambling to, to, to understand what this meant. And, and fundamentally, the, the goal of this program is to you know, get people back to work, accelerate well site cleanups, and do <clears throat> quality environmental cleanups that's significant, that's going to significantly move the dial for these old abandoned oil and gas well sites. Uh, so important to note that it, the, the flow of the contracts and the funding is actually facilitated through <clears throat> through the environmental consultants or or well site service providers and the, and the intent is to create jobs um, so we made it through the first increment um, and, and rob can discuss this a little bit later but um, it was pretty good uptake uh, the word on the street is around forty thousand applications uh, and these are projects that require 100 percent funding so requesting 100 percent funding for those applications you know thirty thousand dollars per well site if there's three well sites on a, on a site itself you could qualify for up to ninety thousand dollars the, the second increment that, that that we are working through currently is for section 36 lands and and that's really for companies that are bankrupt and, and it poses some challenges because we have to sign and facilitate a contract with the well site owner for that work to proceed and if uh if that well site owner is now defunct it can be a challenge trying to find a contact or a legal representation of, of who we should be contacting um, we'll get into more of what we don't know in a little bit but there's third and subsequent increments that are going to be coming and and again under this umbrella that you know this is supposed to create jobs for people get people back to work quickly and uh, and accelerate the well site cleanup so uh, um, we can discuss a little bit about what we think that third tranche and, and the subsequent ones are going to be looking like, but as of right now, uh, we're still looking for clarity from the government. So I'll get into eligibility. Um, again, just reiterating the licensees and environmental contractors must have a signed agreement for the work. Um, we, we can either do that through a one-off agreement or we can do that through a master services agreement. Uh, some, of, some of those exist and are in place with the current well site owners that we, that we work with. Um, the well sites must be inactive. Um, inactive is an important word because that could mean that they're either abandoned, uh, they're suspended, they're zonally abandoned, uh, or surface abandoned. And, and I don't want to get too much into the details, but uh, an, an inactive well is one that's not being used. So some of the eligible activities, this is, if you're not familiar with the, the general remediation and reclamation activities of a well site, these are kind of the, the associated eligible activities. Uh, you know, your environmental site assessments, phase ones, phase twos, uh, similar, albeit different than, you know, your urban phase ones, phase twos. Uh, remediation is the cleanup, reclamation is, is getting, getting things to grow on it again. And if you're, you know, you've got some future development plans for uh, uh, you know, with some significant stripping and grading, we might not need to proceed to that step. And then that can help actually quicken up the, the reclamation of the well site and the cleanup because the reclamation can take years sometimes. Uh, and then preparing those applications and those remediation certificates. Um, what's, what's, not, what's not eligible for the funding um, is any of the contracts that we set up to do this, including you know, the review time or the back and forth or any kind of legal uh, representation that you may require for jumping through some of these contractual obligations that we have to have in in agreement with uh, the, the well site owner um, you know spills uh, orphan wells and you know, orphan wells is an important one because that's funded by the orphan well association and then Rob can chat about that and, and then no back pay um, and uh, yeah with that we'll open it up to what we don't know and I'll, I'll pass the mic over to Rob here and uh, Rob please Take it from here.
Yeah, what we don't know, um, the first phase got rolled out early in May. Um, Trace, for example, completed 1,088 applications within the first few days as it was thought that was come first come, first serve approvals. Our company spent over a thousand hours trying to put contracts and municipal tax and applications in there. Um, since that time, it's been over five weeks and we have had no applications reviewed, approved, rejected. So it's a bit frustrating to understand what the application processing time is. In conversation with Alberta Energy, I think they far underestimated made the interest in this program and the time it would take to review those. In the first application, there was 37,000 applications made. To date, I believe they've only reviewed 15 to 20 percent of them. And really what the biggest roadblock for them is how the contracts need to be set up between an oil field service company such as ourselves and the licensee and how that might look. So it's likely will be in the first phase review time all the way to the end of July. So application processing time is completely unknown and they can't confirm um, with the details when it would come in. So um, what they also won't share is how they approve and select which applications to review first. Um, it's in secret because I believe the money came from the federal treasury with some very tight stipulations on how the money should be rolled out. So I think Alberta Energy is really trying to struggle to put the criteria together on how they look at applications and who gets the funding and why. So for the first phase, um, huge amount of interest, very slow review times. Um, the second phase, which came into effect, I think either mid-May or end of May, was around Section 36 sites, which are very few in the province. And so there's been very little interest in submitting applications for this. So unsure of how many applications are in and how long it'll take to review those, but it's definitely not as interested as that first phase was. So the third and beyond increments, the 300 million, 400 million, 500 million are still yet to, to be determined, but it is believed that there'll be more kind of area-based closure, lots more activities to try and ramp up getting people back to work. But again, really completely unknown and everyone is trying to speculate. So I believe the first um, priority candidates were trying to get small to mid-sized companies that were struggling financially to work on their inactive wells. Um, but also sprinkling a lot of the work around to everyone in every area of the province to get people back to work. And whether they get 100% or 50% or 25% is still a little bit unknown. So what we don't know is a very, very long list, unfortunately, and it's by no lack of trying to get clarity from a variety of different legislators, municipalities, Alberta Energy, AER, CAP, CPAC, a lot of the upstream oil and gas um, associations are still rolling in the dark a little bit about this. So fortunately is a lot that we don't know. Next, Mike. So what the program is, and Mike mentioned it a little bit again, is really is a good opportunity for inactive wells in the province to be retired and reclaimed. Um, being a former employee of an upstream oil and gas company, they're very, there is a very limited driver for upstream oil and gas companies to abandon wells and to reclaim them. There is no regulatory driver for upstream oil and gas companies to do the work and will likely just um, keep people and sites around until the end of life of the company. So it's a good opportunity to have some of these inactive wells cleaned up on landowners properties and have free money from the province to get people back to work as part of the COVID-19 again is really um, a good opportunity to move these sites closer to closure. Yeah, so I think that's really all I had to say there. The section 36 sites 
again, it's likely that those will never get worked on in the current regulatory regime that we have now, just because the companies are defunct and the work associated with that is tied to a viable working interest participant, someone like a Synovus, to do the work. But there's very little incentive for Synovus to spend money to retire any of these inactive wells because of that lack of regulatory driver. So this money will make it economical for those companies to retire these assets and thus freeing up the sites for developers and landowners in the future. Mike, turn it back to you. Yeah, so so with that, we wanted to leave a little bit of time for some question and answers or general comments. Um, interested if, if anyone on the line, either through the chat feature uh, or uh, or if you want to ask your question and unmute yourself, we're happy to uh, to chat. If if you're shy, feel free to uh, to reach out to us here. Uh, we've got our contact details as well, but um, we're here to help. So we've got a question. I'm not sure if everyone can see that. Do we have clarity on where the reclamation exempt well sites would land with respect to the eligibility? Does reclamation exempt equal reclamation certified in the context of this funding? Uh, Rob, are you able to answer that one? Yeah, I think there's no easy answer to that. Each individual well will be unique on whether it can apply to this program or not. Um, in order to do an application, we need to go into the Alberta Energy ETS system and complete an application online. One of the steps in completing those applications is to try and add the unique well identifier of the oil and gas well. And if we can find that well, that well is part of the program, even if it's rec exempted. If the well cannot be found in the program, it's likely not going to be included in the program and won't be able to be worked on. So I can't give you a broad answer other than it's a well by well specific lookup in their ETS system. Great, good question. Other questions from any of the folks online? Um, I mean, while we wait, uh, just sharing, I, I have worked on some of these. Uh, with developers and landowners to, to get them uh, into the system. Still waiting on clarity, uh, but there are opportunities uh, from general phase one, phase two reclamation, remediation uh, within the first few tranches of the, of the funding, as well as even some potential for stripping and grading uh, costs as well. Um, and again, it's out there. We're waiting on clarity from the government as to whether or not those are approved and uh, and hopefully they'll be approved soon because it's a, it's a good season to get done on this stuff. Yeah, one other point I'd have, Mike, is, and it's a good time for landowners and developers if you have oil and gas well sites on properties that you're looking to, to develop to reach out to those licensees either directly or and we could help facilitate that. Just to introduce what your future plans are and see if there's interest from them to put these wells into the program and the funding. The roadblock that we find is we need to get contractual agreements with the licensees in order for us to do the work. And then the province would pay us as oil field services directly. So the licensees need to be able to endorse the work to confirm the technical validity of it. But again, payment comes from directly from the government to us and that's a requirement from the treasury. So it's a good time now to start that planning and to reach out if you are interested. And another important note, and this happened right in the beginning of, of the, the announcement, uh, but that funding initially, a, a portion of it, and we're not sure on the clarity, but it was to help municipalities deal with uh, some of these uh, old infrastructure, abandoned infrastructure as well. Again, we're still waiting to see what the next rounds of funding would look like, but there, there could be an expectation that some of this funding is tailored to to cities and municipalities to help them deal with some of the well sites. Uh, you know, particularly, I, I know I've got an experience in Edmonton, knowing that there's a lot of old infrastructure on, on you know, within the city and just outside the outskirts that need to be addressed. And um, there's not a lot of money to do that right now from the oil and gas producers themselves.
go. Any other questions or comments? If not, I, I think we can we can break and everyone can get back to their afternoon again. I really appreciate everyone's time and thank you for calling in. And uh, yeah, Rob and I will stay on the line if you if you'd like to ask anything. Otherwise, uh, you can get back to your Thursday. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Rob, for your time on behalf of Build Alberta. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, like Mike said, if you'd like to stay on and chat with them, by all means, please do so. Otherwise, thanks for joining today.